I'd been out to Manson, out in, in Washington, Brewster, Washington, in the Apple country. And I come home, and all my buddies in high school were gone, or either drafted or got in that service. I said, well, I'm going. I went to the Navy and the Air Force and all that, and finally I went to the Army. I was in a signal supply company, which we supplied all of the Air Force and troops and different ones with their radios and all that. And then uh, about halfway uh, through the war, they transferred me, transferred me to uh, 88th Division, Cannon Company, 88th Division, Infantry Division, and that was a small can of guns. We started up through the pole, up towards the pole valley, and I was transferred. I was in a cannon company. We never did set up our guns. They went so fast. We never set up our guns. The only one that was set up was the big long ones, and they were pulled up to the Pole River, and where they could shoot across and keep the Germans back, uh, so that. Uh, which they could build a pontoon bridge. And uh, of course, naturally, well, they gave me, I was driving a transferred over and got a German truck, which they, uh, we ran out of GI trucks for all of us to drive and haul ammunition and that. So they gave us German trucks. And what they did, they painted a round circle, on, a white circle on top of the cab on top of the hood, a cab, and then with a star in it so the Air Force could see that we were Americans. But we didn't put anything on the door because that's when the Germans could see the side. We left it the way it was as, as a German. So we went up and started up through the Po Valley and we got to, that one time I got the mail he said, you have priority, you can go ahead of anybody. Okay, hey, I like that. I got up there at the Pole River, <laughs> and they were miles back from the Pole River. That's how much equipment was up there. And of course, the tanks were up front, ready to go across. And I was way back at the end of the line. I was two days before I got to go across. Well, from there on, we hauled ammunition and gas to the different tank companies. So we'd load up and go up, and we didn't know, well, they gave us directions. There was no road, road signs or anything. You just go so far, turn left or right or do this. They're up there in so-and-so valley or wherever, and we tried to find them. One time we pulled into this town, and started to pull in, the driver, or a uh, GI run out and was waving and hollering. I said, what's the matter? He said, get the hell out of here. He said, all those buildings over there are full of snipers. So we made a U-turn in a hurry and got back. Another time we got lost and went the wrong direction. But uh, we made it out okay. And uh, then this one time, we were, there's a big rock wall on the, to our right, and we were going down this road at night, just had the little marker lights on so you could just tell there's somebody there. And we heard tanks coming and said, oh boy, this is here, we met them already. Well, it wasn't ours, it was German tanks going south, and we were up above the line and didn't know it. So we made a U-turn and followed them out. <laughs> Found them back, <laughs> back to the American lines to get out of there. So then, after the war was over, I suppose our company went to guard a uh, compound. 
we were waiting for a big, I don't remember what it was, but it was some kind of big stage show. And there was hundreds of us all packed in, and they had the big uh, drums filled with uh, Budweiser. And over there, all you could have is 3-2 beer, no 5%. But all those cans were filled with ice and beer, and uh, we were waiting for the program to start. And here's some GI come, hollering going on, and he had a big had a piece of newspaper with the whole front page, Japan surrenders. Well, the program was over with then, and it went wild. And the beer cans went down. <laughs> they come, they said, do you want to discharge? Or you? One guy asked, one officer asked me if I wanted to go to OCS, Officer Candidate School. And I said, no, no, I want to go home. So anyway, then on that train going back to Jeff City, I, uh, we pulled in there and there's women and they had a big thing set up for us, welcome committee and all that, and a dinner. And they all started laughing and going on. And we wondered why. I said, well, look in the mirror. And from here up was all black from the set and smoke from the engine. Because we've been hanging out the window <laughs> looking at the scenery. <laughs>